Good morning, everyone. Welcome to PC110, a course on identity. As you all are logging in. Um, okay, let's. Good morning. Good morning, Jachin. Let's start the class with a word of prayer. Can I request Jachin? Can you pray? Yeah, sure. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful time, Lord God. Father, even as we have been learning from your word, Lord God, the true identity we have in you, Father God. Father, we commit this time into your hands, Lord. Father, teach of teach us, Lord, wherever that we have to be freed in your word, Lord God. That truth, Lord, that will set us free, Lord. Each of us who have come here, Lord, help us to learn from your word and live by the word, Lord. Declaring your praises, Lord. In Jesus' mighty matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for praying. Well, as the students are logging in, okay. Thank you so much for bringing that in, and uh, yeah, as the students are logging in, we can begin with our session on identity. Today we are going to cover on section ten. We're going to start on section ten. Being blessed in Christ. How are we being blessed? What does Ephesians chapter one verse three say? Can anyone turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 and read it loud? Anyone from the class can read? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Nina. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, how blessed we are in Christ Jesus and our inheritance in Christ that we have we have been blessed already with every spiritual blessing that is needed for us in Christ Jesus. So here it says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So our blessing is in Christ. When we are in Christ, we are being blessed. So what does it say? Our inheritance is in Christ. So today we're going to look into the blessings that we inherit in Christ. When we are in Christ, there are certain blessings come as an inheritance to us. So while we have already mentioned many promises and the blessings that we have in Christ earlier. We are going to study in detail. There are other additional blessings that we could look at in Christ Jesus. So when we talk about our blessing, we talk about the inheritance that we have in Christ. What is inheritance? Can anyone share what is inheritance? Inheritance is something uh, to give another as a possession, which is an heritage. So we turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Can I request one of us to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12? In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him. Who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our 
hope in Christ might be for the praise of His glory. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. So we see that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, that in Him also we have obtained an inheritance. So in who, who does it talk about? Here it denotes Jesus. So in Jesus, we have obtained our inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So we see that God has given us this inheritance so that we may praise him because of who he is. So when we are saved, we were also brought into an inheritance. So what is this inheritance that we have in Christ that we talk about. Anyone from the class, what is that inheritance that we have in Christ? What is the position that we have in Christ? Till now we have discussed so many. One of them is that we are the heirs of Christ. We are, uh, you know, the child of God. We have been given that highest position in Christ. These are our inheritance. Salvation is our inheritance. Isn't it? Eternal life is our inheritance. So the inheritance is promised when someone is alive, but granted to each of us when they die. So generally, inheritance passes from the parent to a child uh, or and then to their children, to their generation. So we see that in New Testament, believers in Christ Jesus are referred as God's children. So there are many passages about what Jesus followers inherited. So this is what we studied even in the previous chapter. We are the child of God. We are the children of God. We are the heirs of Christ Jesus, the Most High God. Our, our relationship has been restored back to God through Jesus Christ is what we study. So there are many other passages about what Jesus followers inherit when we die, when he died. And what, what we will inherit through Christ Jesus. So the special thing about our inheritance in Christ is that uh, when, when, when Jesus died, when he rose again, he was seated at the right hand of the Father, the highest position, the highest position that has been given to, uh, uh, given to Jesus, the, uh, the beloved Son of God. And you and I, when we are in Christ, we have been given that highest position in Christ. We have the inheritance in Christ because he lives. He lives in us and we live in him. We also experience the portion of that inheritance during our earthly life. Can I request one of us to turn to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 to 14? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 to 14. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. It is 11th verse, right? Yes. 11, 12, 13. Oh, 12 words. In order that we, who are the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, 
the promised Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you also read 14, Nemo? Thank you. 14 also? Yes, please. Who is a deposit? That is, we were prom marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory? Thank you. So what we see here is in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 to 14, it talks about having obtained an inheritance in Christ Jesus and also been sealed with the promise of Holy Spirit. Now who has become a guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire a possession of it to the praise of his glory. So here we see Jesus promises followers that when he will return, the Holy Spirit will be guaranteed as an helper. Where do we see that? We see that in, in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 15 to 19. We see that Jesus promising his followers that he will send a comfort, a helper who will be with us, who will abide with us forever. And those who have been born again currently have the Holy Spirit as we await Jesus' return and living for eternity with him in heaven. So we have this promise that the Holy Spirit is with us, who will lead us, is our inheritance as well. So the inheritance that we are talking here is something that we receive from God. When we receive, when we are in Christ, we receive this inheritance as a possession, as an heritage that God gives us. So God gave us this inheritance so that we may praise Him to be with him. So when we are saved, we were also brought into an inheritance that opens our eyes in order for us to turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith. In me. This is what we see in Acts chapter 26, verse 18. We also see, I mean, in the previous class, we studied about the heads of being in Christ. We see in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, we, we saw that we are the heads of God and a joint heirs with Christ. So as a heirs of God, we have an inheritance that has been given to us from God himself. And as a joint head, we share in all that the Father gave to His Son, Jesus Christ. So when He walked as a Son of God, and if children, then heirs, that we are the heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So in Romans 8, 17, it says like, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified with Him. So we have... We, as the heir, we have the inheritance of Christ. We have the inheritance of God. With that, we will move on to Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Can I request one of us to read Colossians chapter 1, verse 12? Yes, sure. Please come Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 may you be may you be made strong with all the strength which comes from from his glorious power so that you may be able to endure everything with patience okay Amen. Okay, amen. So what and, is... Yeah. Yes, yes. And with joy give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to have your share of what God has reserved for his people in the kingdom of light. Thank you. 
Thank you. So this is what we see, the giving thanks to Father who has qualified each of us, you and me, to be the partaker of this inheritance which is in Christ Jesus. So God has qualified each of us where we can partake and enjoy the inheritance that he has given to each of us so that we do not need to do anything or we don't have to toil or work hard to be qualified to take or inherit this inheritance. It has just been given to us so that we can enjoy the blessing. It is already ours. And we are qualified when we receive it, we are in Christ. When we are in Christ, we are qualified to enjoy this blessing of inheritance. So that is what we also read in Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts chapter 20. Verse 32. Can I request you have to please turn as we study because it's a scripture which will enlighten us. It's a scripture that will teach us and talk to us. So I would request you all to you know, turn through your Bible and read out loud the scriptures as we all are online today so we all can hear each other. Request you all to please turn. So can we turn to Acts chapter 20 verse 32 please? Yes, sure. Go ahead. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. And now I, com I commend you to the care of God and to the message of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you the blessings God has for all, all His people. Thank you. Amen. So we see that we need a revelation of God's word. For us to understand, like for us to be built up and receive that inheritance that we can be sanctified. So we need a revelation of God's word where we can learn how to walk in this inheritance that is given to us. It belongs to us. It is ours. We need to get that revelation so that we can inherit it, make it ours, make it our own. So that's what we try to do week after week, to know our inheritance, to know our identity and make it our own so that it is, this is what we become. So as Apostle Paul prayed for the church in Ephesians, you know, he says, like, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that, that you may know what is the hope of his calling? We read that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Let me read that to you. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Yeah. So he says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? So we need to receive a revelation of that glorious inheritance that each of us have in Christ. So how do we do it? We need to study, we need to learn, we need to understand. When we learn, study and understand, we believe. So when we believe, we start to walk in that glorious inheritance. Everything is possible to the one who believes. So we need to believe the word the word of God tells about our inheritance, about our relationship, about our possession with Christ, so that we may walk in that inheritance, we may walk in that identity, we may walk in that knowledge of blessing that we have in Christ Jesus. Can I also request you to please turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 24. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 22 to 24. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you, says the Lord Christ. 
Thank you, Ren. So we see that in the scripture, it's asking us to obey in all things as your master according to the flesh. So what is our understanding from this whole passage? As Christians, as believers, as a child of God, we need to put on the new identity. We are the new man, we are the new creation. We have this newness in us. So when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when we are in Christ, we have become a new creation. And the old things have passed. So sometimes they will show up. But then there is a demand over us, the newness in life. There's a new creation asks us to be submissive, ask, asking us, demanding an attitude of submission. We need to have the submissive attitude towards the master under whom we serve, under whom we report. So in a modern day context, we refer to our pastors, our ministry leaders, uh, if we are working in a workplace, to our employers, to our supervisors, we need to be submissive. We need to carry this attitude of submission. Now, this attitude of submission should just not be like an eye service or should not be something that we please men. But then Paul is asking us to do have it with a sincere heart, fearing God that he is watching over us. So if we are always tempted to work just as hard as we have to do, and we think we only have to please God, that is not right. Because at the end of the day, we know that God is a God who sees over us. A God is a God of understanding, and a God is a God who watches over us. So God wants each of us, his children, to be ultimately submissive to the head of authority and of himself. So here, God is, uh, here Paul is instructing the believers in the church and Colossians. He's saying it's not only to them, it's for all of us that he's asking us, whatever you do, you do it as though you're doing it unto the Lord and not unto any man. Why? With the knowledge, with the knowing that God is watching over us. Can we hide anything from God? Can we hide our thoughts, our attitude? No, everything is naked in front of God. God knows everything from our thoughts, our actions, to our words, our attitude, everything God knows. So here, Paul, Apostle Paul is encouraging the believers to be submissive and to do as though we serve God. So God promises, he also says, there's a promise. So God promises to reward those who work with that kind of heart. God promises to reward those who work with that kind of heart. So as a human, we may be doing everything sincerely, working very hard. But at the same time, we may say, Lord, no one are watching. I'm not being appreciated for the work that I'm doing. My boss is not looking at me. But then night and day you're doing what you're supposed to do sincerely unto the Lord. Friends, I'll tell you, the scripture says the promotion comes from the Lord. The Lord our God is one who's watching over you. Also in Corinthians, we see that the, it says the labor in the Lord is not in vain. So whatever you do unto the Lord, do it unto the Lord. Whatever you do, do it sincerely, with sincere heart, obedient in front of God. Do it unto the Lord. Even if somebody is watching, no one are watching at you. But let your work be done in perfect and in sincere. That as though you are doing it unto the Lord and the Lord is the one who is watching over you. So the Lord who watches you secretly will definitely reward you in public. The scripture says the blessing comes from God. Promotion comes from God. The Lord who watches you will reward you. And it also talks about do everything as for the Lord. So when we do it, we receive our inheritance from God himself. Can we turn to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15 please? Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15.
and for this and for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance thank you so here we see that talks about jesus being the mediator of a new covenant in which the death redeems us from our transgression of God's law. So it is in this new covenant we can receive the eternal promise or the eternal inheritance from God. That is the eternal life. And also we turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Can I request you all to read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Sir? Thank you, thank you, Nina. Yes, yes, that's it. So we see that blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again. Now where? Born again into this living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. So what we see here, Peter is making a point that our inheritance will not get rot or rusted, fade away or be corrupted or been robbed. Nothing. We also see the similar passage in Matthew chapter 6, 19 to 20. And also we see that in uh, Revelations, the book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, where it says, nothing like an earthly inheritance. Our inheritance in Christ can never be diminished or destroyed. It cannot be taken away for Christians or for us, it is a promise. The hope of sharing in the community of God is forever. So that's the one that sustains us throughout every trial, every circumstances, every phase that we go in our life or every difficult challenges that we face during our lifetime. So you see that? That's the promise that we have in Christ. Can we also turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. I'll read this for you. Okay, Sean, go ahead. Yes, Sean, you can go ahead. Our we suffer will bring us tremendous and internal and eternal glory, which great, uh, much greater than the trouble. For we fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a light, only for a time. But what cannot be seen lasts forever. Thank you. So we see in this passage that we do not lose heart through our outer self in wasting away our, our inner self is being renewed day by day. 
for this light momentary affliction is preparing us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So what we see here is, this inheritance is promised by God, but not to everyone. The inheritance of eternal life with God is actually reserved for those who, who believe in Jesus Christ, who hear the truth and receive Him as a Lord and Savior. So in short, the benefits of inheritance in Christ Jesus is, is to the person or is to the one who have accepted Jesus as a Lord and Savior who has accepted Jesus as God's only begotten Son and who believe that He died on the cross for you and me and He rose again and He is seated at the right hand of the Father. So those who believe in this truth can only inherit this promise that we have in Christ Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is granted to that person as a deposit of promise, of coming, of that eternal life that we have, or we inherit in Christ Jesus. So Christ is our inheritance. So when we have Jesus within us, we have this real joy, real peace, real freedom in Him. Knowing, as stated in the uh, in, in the early in the first book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we see that man was created by God to be a vessel to contain God we are the vessel of honor isn't it we are we are the uh, vessel of honor we have been sanctified we have been set apart for his work so we are God's vessel. Man has been created so that God can be with him. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we also see that we have been created in his own image and likeness. In whose image? In God's image and in God's likeness. And God presented himself to man to be man's possession and content and his own inheritance so we can be filled with all kinds of things that is of this world that what the world could offer each of us we may be very rich we may have million dollars in our bank account but if we do not have christ in us we are poor in our spirit we are empty So man is a vessel. We need to have our being in Christ. Our inheritance, our inheritance is in Christ. So we need to be filled more of Him. That's why it talks about you know the earthly riches and the heavenly riches. We need to seek more for the heavenly riches that we may be well, we may be rich in our spirit, in our being. So man is a vessel to contain God, and God is our everlasting portion. God is our inheritance, He is our portion, and is a cup of enjoyment. We need to believe that. We need to remember that God is our portion, our inheritance, and a cup of enjoyment. He is our everything. He is our everlasting portion. What else do we need when He is our everlasting portion? This is what we see in the Gospel of John 6.35. He says, when Christ came, He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall by no mean hunger, and he who believes in me 
shall by no means thirst with with him is the fountain of life and in his light we see light so we see that christ came to be the reality of the true life where he will be our living water and he wants man he wants us to eat and drink of him so that god would be man's possession and we could inherit be part of this portion of joy portion of this inheritance portion of this enjoyment so that we can claim that john 15 uh, in john chapter 15 we read through it and we see we have this understanding of the wine and the branch and you know abiding in each other so what happens we are trying to become one with christ the scripture says, as I abide in him and he abide in us and we have become one in him. So when we become one in him, we have the access. So what is in Christ Jesus is now available to you and me. There was a divine exchange that took place on the cross. So whatever is in Christ, he has given it to us. And whatever our sin nature is, he has taken it on him and instead he has given us his righteousness. So we have this possession, the eternal possession in Christ Jesus. So God is our possession and, and he is the portion of our cup. God is a portion of our enjoyment and he is our real enjoyment. And we need to get this understanding so that we can reign in life. That's what in Romans chapter 5 verse 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. So we see that in the briefly we discussed about this in the earlier sessions that Adam through his disobedience, which brought all of us into subjection of sin, Satan, and death. And in everything that comes because of that includes the sickness, disease, death, pain. However, the Lord Jesus, through what he did, through the act of sacrificing his own life on the cross, he brought us out from the dominion of the sin, sickness, death, and Satan. Now, these do not have power over us. Now, we can rule and reign in Christ Jesus, where we have this as our inheritance. Freedom, reigning uh, with freedom is in Christ. We have an authority in Christ. Why? Because Christ has got the victory. He died on the cross and he won sin, Satan, and death. So when we are in Christ, we have this inheritance of freedom where we can reign in Christ with freedom, with authority. And also in Ephesians 1, 3, as we read earlier in this class, through Christ, we have the access of every spiritual blessing. We have the inheritance of every blessing that comes from God himself. And he gives us because why? Because we are his inheritance, we are his portion. And we we have the access to every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. And also in James chapter 1, verse 17, he says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation of shadow or turning where we have the access because we have this inheritance in Christ where we have been blessed we have if God has blessed us with every gift and every good gift that we receive is perfect gift is from above from God himself he is a blesser of good gifts and because of that we have been enriched in everything in everything because we have Christ himself, our portion. Christ himself is our portion. So that we can triumph 
in Christ Jesus. This is what we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 14. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So what is happening here? Because we are the inheritance of God, God is allowing us to have this triumph in Christ. So in every situation, we can be confident that God is on our side and he will bring us out no matter what situation I am in. We have the victory because we don't fight our battle from the place of war, but we fight our battle from the place of victory. So God will always cause us to triumph because victory is ours if we refuse to quit. We don't have this attitude. This is not there in our DNA, giving up attitude. We should not give up knowing that God is with us, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. This battle does not belong to me, but it belongs to God himself. So just like how Apostle Paul went through different season of trials, but one thing that we see is in his whole, uh, uh, in his journey, in his life, we see that he didn't carry this attitude of giving up. He always believed that God is with me and he will back me up. And as he trusted, as he believed, not only for Apostle Paul, we also see with the other apostles like Peter, James, John, with the other apostles, we see that God himself backing up. He kept his word. They all had the sense of God himself being with them and strengthening them during the time of weakness. They found that the riches is in Christ Jesus. They found the inheritance is in Christ. With that knowledge, with that understanding, they all moved in their daily life. And this is what Apostle Paul is encouraging each of us today, that can we identify our inheritance in, is in Christ so that we can be encouraged. We can hold on to this knowledge. We can hold on to this understanding that our inheritance is in Christ so that we can triumph in every area of life. And even when we finish our purpose, just like how Apostle Paul says that I fought a good fight of faith, lay hold on to that eternal life to which you were called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. This is what he said in First Timothy 6, chapter 6, verse 12 during his last season. He's encouraging Timothy's spiritual son that he may not carry the attitude of giving up, but then hold on to that victory that we have uh, inherited in Christ. So we need to know that we have we have an overcomer and we are more than overcomer. When we are in Christ, we are more than overcomer. And we have this promise of life. We have this promise of life. Because Christ himself is life. Jesus himself is life. He is the bread of life. He is the living water. He is the way, the truth, and the light. So here in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1, we see Apostle Paul says, As the apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Jesus Christ. He is our life. And we need to know that he is our eternal life. And because we have Christ in us, we have been sealed by his Holy Spirit. We have been guaranteed that the Holy Spirit is within us. That's what we read in John chapter 14, verse 16 says, When I go back, I'll send you a comforter, a guide who will be with you, who will abide with you forever. So there is a guarantee that the Holy Spirit is within us and he will abide with us forever. He won't be like how he used to visit and move at the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, he is abiding with us. We are the new creation in Christ. So when we have received Jesus as a Lord and Savior, we have the Holy Spirit who is abiding with us. So with that, we will end this session knowing that God is our portion, knowing that God is our possession, knowing that God is our inheritance. He is the portion of our cup. 
God is a portion of our enjoyment. He is our real enjoyment. We need to know that. We need to believe in this. When we believe, we see that the bread of life, the Jesus who is the life, who is the living water, he will come into us. When we believe in him, and when we take part in him, we are God's possession. We are God's possession. So God is not only our inheritance, but also the portion of a cup, as we also read in uh, Psalms chapter 16, verse 5, that he is our portion of our cup. And in this verse, we also see that the inheritance is just a general expression whereas the cup is more personal expression. So God is not only our inheritance, but also the portion of our cup for our enjoyment. So God is not only a portion, but also a real enjoyment. And God maintains that allotted portion for each of us. So with this understanding, knowing that God is our inheritance, God is our everlasting possession. God is our portion. And He is the cup of our enjoyment. Can we pray? Lord Jesus, we return to you with this knowledge, with this understanding that you are our inheritance. You are the cup of our portion. You are our joy of life. In you we have our being. Thank you, Lord, that you have chosen each one of us. Thank you that you have called us. You have given us a purpose. You have set us apart. You have sanctified us. And you have blessed us with, a, with an inheritance where we can have a portion, where we can have a being, where we can enjoy the portion in you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this blessing that you have blessed each of us with. Thank you that you will open our understanding. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will help, you will open our mind, you will open our eyes, that we may understand the inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus, the portion that we have in God. It's not like the earthly portion, but it is the heavenly portion, which is eternal, which is eternal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your hand of blessing over us. Thank you that you satisfy us with your living water, with the bread of life. Thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, as your word says, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Thank you, Father, for helping us to understand this truth, where we have our identity in Christ, where we come to the acknowledgement like, uh, of understanding that our identity is in Christ and in Christ alone, so that we may have a being in Christ. We know who we are in Christ is in you. Thank you, Lord, for this understanding. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. I hope it was a blessing to each one. Thank you and God bless. Thank you.